So thanks everybody for being here. Um, I'm Jovanina Sowers and this is Woody Moses. We are the co-directors of Washington, Maine and are so happy to have you here with us for the speaker series this evening. Um, a quick reminder before we start with our speakers tonight that our next speaker series evening talk will be in on January 3rd. We have we don't have who's going to be speaking yet, but save the date for January 3rd. Somebody will definitely be speaking. <laughs> it might be us, but somebody will definitely be speaking. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and then for tonight, I am going to you trying to move on here. There we go. For tonight, we have Savannah Smith and Ebony Welburn from C Potential, who will be talking with us about heart-based connections to the maritime industry and teaching. Um, we're excited to have you both with us here this evening. They have an organization called C Potential, which they will tell us all about this evening. And we're going to pass it off to them next. So I'll stop sharing. I'm going to double check our weight room to make sure we don't have anybody else in there. Looks like we're good to go. And Savannah and Ebony, we're so welcome and happy to have you. Please take it away. Hi everyone. Um, we would first love to have y'all put your names and your pronouns as well as um, your location, what indigenous lands that you are on in the chat, just so we can get a little bit familiar with you all. And I'll also drop in the um, the web address of where you can figure out um, whose lands you reside on. And you can just take a second to do that. Fun fact about Ebony and I, we're actually roommates, <laughs> just in different rooms right now. We don't sit next to each other because I move my hands too much and Ebony does not like that. But we are in West Seattle, also um, ancestral and occupied lands of the Duwamish, Coast Salish, Stiligwamish, Suquamish, and Muckleshoot people, past and present. And thank you for the ones who have shared already. Um, and if you have not, that's fine. Take the time to put it in. Um, use that reference. It's really a lovely a website um, that's sponsored by the public. And so you can always go there whether you're traveling or not to see who lands you reside on. And we, we encourage you to do that as well. Um, so we're gonna open up our meeting because it's all about relationship building, right? Heart-based connections. So we're gonna start with a question of the day. And so Savannah, can you put in a chat for me? But the question of the day is, according to your mood and feelings, what type of water body would you be? So according to your mood and feelings today, what type of water body would you be? And feel free to, as Margie has already done, drop it in the chat, um, but you can also come off mute and share what it is and why. <laughs> a lazy river, nice, a lake. <laughs> oh, that's a good read. <laughs> river, many emotions flowing through you. Oh. 
I think for me, I would be um, something like the water flowing through the gills of a fish, you know, like I'm being sucked into it, but I'm being, you know, filtered through something, you know, an experience, life happenings, um, and coming out the other end, I guess, clear, clear. So that's what I'm feeling like today. <laughs> the water moving through gills. <laughs> A swamp, <laughs> still a very productive, nice. <laughs> Marty said her why was because it's fed by freshwater glacier springs and feeds eventually to Mother Sea. That's really nice. I'm like, I'm so thinking. Usually, I don't really struggle <laughs> to come up with something, but. I wanna, all I could think about right now is I'm really cold in this house, but I'm like, I gotta be like a snow blizzard or something. Cause also just to match the energy of tonight, got a lot going on <laughs> tonight. So yeah, I guess I'm a, a blizzard. Thanks for sharing Savannah. Um, <laughs> we have moving, quick moving river, a lot happening on this Monday. Um, Trying to keep up. Sounds like a Monday for sure. <laughs> And warm, salty water that relaxes me and allows me to float at the same time. I love that. Um, if you still haven't put yours in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, but we're going to keep moving. Thank you for sharing that with us. We love to do temperature checks, make sure our group is ready to receive. Um, and if not, then we adapt accordingly. But before Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to also say, we also love that question because every time you ask it, I feel like it builds on your own relationship to water. You're getting to kind of think about water in a different way every time and absorb the perspectives and um, observational lenses of other people. So love that question. <laughs> um, thank you, Savannah. Aww. A flooded estuary, slightly turbid, still productive. Moving forward to more clarity. Thank you for sharing, Nicole. Um, so we're just gonna get a little bit into who we are now. Um, and I will share my screen, one second. Okay. Cool, so. We are C Potential, and I'll go ahead and begin just sharing a little bit about my own personal background. Um, I am not from the West Coast. I am from the Carolinas. That's where I was born, raised. I went to college for environmental studies. Um, but along with that, I've always been really passionate about marine ecosystems. And so although I didn't major in marine biology, I did a lot of things pertaining to that space. While in college, I had got my advanced open water certification. And then after graduating, I decided to hop around the different internships to explore um, what was open to me. And so I went to Florida to do wildlife rehabilitation and environmental education, and then found myself here on the East Coast doing marine science education, as well as teaching youth how to use water vehicles safely. But me and Savannah ended up meeting at our previous I'm going to try to yell to Ebony across the room right now that she's frozen, but um, really cool. Okay. okay. You're back, Ebony. You were frozen. I'll, I'll, I'll oh. try to yell to you. <laughs> yeah. Could you hear, did you hear what I said? No. Nothing? You were talking about where you and Savannah first met at your program. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So we met at Airport and we were asked basically if we could do anything in the world, what would it be? And we both stood up and said something similar to connecting BIPOC youth to marine science. Um, and that's kind of where we had this initial spark for our organization, but it's changed over time. And we'll tell you a little bit about that, but I'll go ahead and let Savannah introduce herself. Hi, everyone. So my name is Savannah Smith. I use she, her pronouns. I grew up in the Ryan Skyway area of Washington. 
and also early on had an interest in animals and the environment um, because my family had a lot of non-human family members in it. So animals ranging from hermit crabs to peacocks is what I was growing up alongside. And it really just got me um, curious and identifying that each animal had its own unique soul and characteristics. And I found myself um, learning about marine science in second grade when I started checking out books about dolphins from the library and had a teacher slash family friend recommend to me that I become a marine biologist someday. And I had no idea what that meant. I didn't really know any scientists, especially um, ones that were black women, but somebody told me I could do it. So I stuck with it. I ended up going to Western Washington University to get my bachelor's in biology with a marine emphasis there, which was great in the sense that I got to work really hands-on in marine environments with my professors and got to do a cool internship studying hunting behavior of harbor seals. Um, but it was also a big culture shock for me coming from a majority minoritized community to a predominantly white university. And I really noticed the disconnect there was for BIPOC in environmental spaces, whether that was political, professional, academic, or just community-based conversations and decisions. And so I wasn't quite sure what to do with those observations while in college, but after graduating was very happy to meet Ebony because her passion so closely aligned with mine. And she encouraged me that we could create space for us, so for ourselves and for others. And so with Sea Potential, our mission is to cultivate a full cycle of BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and people of color representation in maritime. Um, we define maritime as any career connected to water. And we have two main tracks for accomplishing this mission. So I'm director of youth engagement and my track focuses on helping youth foster heart-based connections to marine environments, which we'll be talking about today, heart-based connections. <laughs> um, but we are acknowledging individual and generational trauma youth could be carrying with them, causing them to harbor these subconscious or even conscious negative biases towards marine environments. And then we're tying in cultural resiliency, um, tools for healing, and just creating more opportunities for positive experiences in aquatic environments. And then Ebony is Director of Corporate Advancement, so she can explain that track. Yes, our second track is Corporate Advancement. Um, and this is where we focus on working with maritime businesses and organizations on their workplace closer, culture, just to make sure that they're inclusive um, for the individuals that we're trying to invite in. Um, just knowing that it is a predominantly white male space as it hopes to diversify from the efforts happening within the region. We want to make sure that everyone has the tools that they need to make sure, you know, they can navigate those different perspectives. And so it looks like coming across as workshops pertaining to cross-cultural communication, conflict resolution. Um, we do inner child work workshops as well. And it also comes across as doing strategic planning along with mission alignment and leadership alignment. So that's just a little bit about the work that we're um, taking on. We are about a year old at this point, um, and we've done a variety of things pertaining to youth programming, um, doing strategic planning with some individuals, as well as some workshops with local organizations as well. Um, but we can talk a little bit more about that at the end if that is of interest as we do have time for questions and answers. So today, as you know from the title and you signed up, read the blurb and everything, we're going to be talking about heart-based connections and how that shows up in our work. Um, we'll start by explaining what we mean by heart-based connections. And so when, <laughs> when we say heart-based connections, what we're really um, talking about is when the teachings and learnings are supported by experience and are foundationally backed by um, relationship and interconnectedness. So it's really when you can make a personal connection to what you're learning and absorbing more than just sitting and listening to a bunch of facts or information, it's being present through your heart. And so we kind of break this down to why it is important on our next slide. Yes, let me stop sharing real quick. I think it's missing, but one second. Oh, okay which is it's not a super wordy slide anyway, so <laughs> I could probably just kind of start talking. But um, the overall reason for why heart-based connections are important is for retention of information. When you ha have that connection and um, passion for something, you could remember more so what you've been talking about and what you've been learning. And then we 
break it up into a few more categories of how it's important in different aspects of your life. Um, our heart-based connections affect how we navigate life in general. And so one of those um, ways it shows up is through lawmaking and community-based decisions. Um, when you have heart-based connections, you can be more of an advocate and can participate in conversations that you've um, personally been left out of either by your own choice or just systemically. When you have that heart-based connection, you make more of a step to participate and share with your community what you learn. Um, we also see it being important for environmental stewardship. So that shows up on the individual level, um, being more of a conscious community member and also, yeah, just being a long-term steward of the land because you have that reasoning and that why behind what you're doing. And then lastly, it's important for career choices. So ideally the careers that we're cho are choosing are aligned with our passions and our interests. And for our work in particular with maritime industry careers, we more so view um, the problem being lack of awareness over lack of interest. And in order to spark that lack or that interest in the first place, you gotta know how to engage the heart. And so those are kind of the reasons why heart-based connections are important to us. There's many different reasons, but we'll go into more of how you actually can implement that and how we implement it ourselves. Thank you, Savannah. And to go ahead and continue on about what we mean about heart-based connections, we're going to have y'all participate in a breakout group. And so in this breakout group, you'll be with a pair. It'll be four minutes long. Um, each person would have two minutes to speak. And you're going to answer this question. So what is something um, that you feel like you have a really strong connection to? And we basically just want you to story tell that object or person or non-human entity, what makes it feel connected to and how that shows up for you. And then we'll come back and discuss it. And I think Savannah is gonna drop that in the track for us. I'm just set up the breakout, the breakout rooms right now. Okay, thank you. Oh, I just I yep <laughs> apologies I need to though because no otherwise it would be by themselves <laughs> yeah I, I did forget I was going to give an example of like how heart-based connections how when we've seen it in our organization mm -hmm. recently so I could share about that right now but um yeah, one time we seen after a program of tide pulling with our youth, um, when she was getting picked up, she actually had her family, her mom and her, her younger brothers come down to the beach and she was showing them what she learned throughout the day. And that was just direct proof to us of how engaging her heart encouraged her to go share that knowledge back with her family and with her community. And we also have a program going on right now called Get Into a Maritime, which is a um, a maritime career exposure program for middle school aged youth. And before starting the field trip portion of that program, we decided to dedicate the first two weekends to strictly relationship building, getting to know each other, and also exploring our relationship to water in general. And after the first day of that program, um, we were going around doing one word reflections with our youth. And one of the youth said, um, their word was connected and said, I already feel so connected to everyone here. And to us, that was a great affirmation of the importance of taking that time to do that, especially before going into these new experiences together, which could be kind of intimidating or um, could be vulnerable for these youth to learn something or experience something for the first time together to build that relationship with each other and for them to actually feel it through what we were doing. Do you, do you guys want to be in breakout rooms? Do we have to put you in breakout rooms? We were going to stay outside just to kind of talk. Yeah. Um, Okay. For the recording. <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. Here we go. Cool. 
I did not put a survey cover. Okay. I did. Not. <laughs> Dang it. Sorry. I yeah. That's I, okay. I was I, I teach on Zoom every week and um a few weeks ago a students were in breakout rooms, it was going great, da 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 da. I went to close the breakout rooms and I just closed the entire Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I just like shut yeah. up. I was oh, working, God. I was working in the same space like across the room and he goes, God damn it. <laughs> what just happened? He was like <laughs> yelling at himself. Oh man, it is it's like that. It's just like I think you know, and then it just with one wrong click, it goes downhill. <laughs> right? Like I'm, I'm used yeah, to there you being like back up again, but like oh, nobody man. came back to class. <laughs> okay. like, that's over. Yeah. <laughs> Later. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah. But what what we can do a little breakout <laughs> session. Oh, was there a timer on the rooms just to yeah. clarify? Four, four, four minutes, minutes we put it for. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So hopefully they'll get a reminder like 30 seconds beforehand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coming back. Um yeah, what was what was the question again? We were setting up the breakout rooms, so I didn't Yeah. Um, it's basically just telling something that you feel personally connected to um, and kind of why, why that is. What makes it a strong connection for you? I think for like, if the, when I'm thinking of the marine world, I think of like, because I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, and so my first real like, ocean tropical experience was when I went to college in Hawaii. I got a scholarship to go to college and I went to Hawaii and I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> so I started volunteering at the aquarium there and just fell in love with snorkeling and I started scuba diving. And anyways, the turtles, the green sea turtles are like mm -hmm. my, have a have a sweet spot every time I see them. They just put me into this just meditative, beautiful, peaceful place in life that I could just mm -hmm. float and snorkel for hours and not want to ever leave when I watch yeah. them. Wow. That sounds yeah. lovely. <laughs> Very descriptive. I'm like thinking about it now. <laughs> yeah, you just like we, you know, float back and forth in the waves and you watch them and they're just floating back and forth in the waves. And it's just so yeah, meditative. Mm -hmm. Pretty special. Mm -hmm. Sounds beautiful. Yeah. I just love being by the water, you know. Growing up I didn't like we always I, I grew up really poor, but we but I happen to live by the ocean. I was just always kind of like the things were crazy in the house or whatever like i could go there it was just like very calm nice. very very calming and where did you grow up i grew up in rhode island rhode island oh okay oh cool yeah i might be the only person you ever met from rhode island it, that's <laughs> true i like i who do i know for rhode island <laughs> It's a small little place. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't realize how small of a state it was until I met Woody and went to see his parents and we drove around the whole <laughs> island or the whole state, state in like Whoa. 45 minutes or something like that. 45 minutes? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I just got a message. Oh, here we go. Time yeah. is up. Well, time is up. Welcome back. Folks are coming back. Our timer ran out, so we dismissed ourselves. <laughs> okay, check the room. There we go. That's kind of good. If you were still talking about it, then there's more, <laughs> more goodness to come. <laughs> that was interesting, though. There was a timer, but it didn't kick you out. Yeah, we were, oh, I was, uh, we were in the middle of uh, learning about, I was learning about. Travis's uh, connection to Comic Con and comics, and, and that's kind oh, of nice. like seconds, but yeah, so we could have kept going. <laughs> well, good thing your colleagues also, right? So you could talk about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. I know, I'm like, we've been working together for almost a year now. Has, has it been the work anniversary yet? One year tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? 
Yeah. Happy Open anniversary. <laughs> Thanks. Our anniversary is in what? Come back to not everybody has come back yet. On the 21st. Just try and figure however many days that is. Yeah. Well, here comes more. Okay. okay. Here they come. There you go. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Welcome back. Okay. Yeah. So thank you all for um, participating in that with us. I hope you have some really rich and indulging conversations that can hopefully carry past this room and give you something to talk about as you want to connect with others. Um, but we're at the moment going to do a little bit of group sharing. And so I just want y'all to think about the conversations that you've had and figure out what are the common themes that y'all shared, whether it was person to object or object to entity, whatever the case, what were some of the common themes between your conversations? Are we just jumping in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, Margie and I <laughs> got together and caught up and uh, we, our family has just bought a boat and Margie and I were able to connect and talk about both of our family histories. Like her parents had owned boats and just that shared love of our, our mutual area here on Vancouver Island and the excitement of being able to travel to all these different natural islands and bays off our shore. And so the connection both between the generations, um, her parents to her and my parents and my husband's parents to me, and then the connection to our, our shared marine space, if you will. So that was, it was a really fun conversation. <laughs> I love that, especially the intergenerational content. Yes. <laughs> well done, Jen, totally. <laughs> Don't we all wish we could just get out there a lot on the water? Totally. So oh, Casey, okay. oh, oh, sorry. You go ahead, Sheila. I'll go okay. after. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, Nicole and I were talking about the ocean. And uh, for me, nature in general, but because we both do a lot of intertidal exploration and walking and walking and walking on the beaches when the tides are out and discovering fun things, uh, the fresh air, often being totally by yourself and how easy it was to relax and just get totally into the the ocean and what we were seeing and kind of leaving everything else behind. Uh, so yeah, we had a, a very nice similar kind of um, uh, heartfelt conversation about what we really felt important to us. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. So Casey and I found, well, I mean, this is going to sound like we just made it up because of the theme of it, <laughs> but we both, um, right from a young age, had had a connection with water that we can't really, initially couldn't explain, but it seems to be kind of part of us. But for both of us, it was also important within our families. And I was talking about even from a very young age, when it came time to leave places where we were by water, I, they always had to drag me kicking and screaming. Kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it also, um, I also from a young age knew that I needed, that I wanted to live by the ocean. And that's what I ended up doing. And it ended up being my career, which I'm very passionate about. And I feel very lucky about. And K Casey, seem to feel the same way where there's there is a family connection with water and also that we both got to be doing what we love to do um, with people that we really like to be with nice but water was the thing <laughs> <laughs> we hear a lot of waters but it makes sense we're <laughs> in a water-based community right now <laughs> um but thank you so much for sharing were you going to say something savannah not anything much different than what you're saying. <laughs> also, just love all the ways that family has been connected to these heartfelt stories, too. I think that's pretty beautiful. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. Um, we're going to continue to move forward. And if you do want to share, feel free to drop it in the chat. You know, we'll read it. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit of an introduction into why 
what are the components of a heart-based relationship? So, and there'll be similar themes throughout that you'll see in the presentation. So, so yeah, Savannah's gonna do her thing. Um, and this is really saying how we incorporate some of these heart-based components, the things you all were talking about into uh, curriculum design. And so our first one is actually observation. A little bit of you touched on this. Uh, we were talking in our little breakout over Zoom, how Giovanni had a connection with sea turtles and how she spent a lot of time just observing them and watching them. And I think that's something really important when it comes to observing to know and not to prove. Um, sometimes science can be really um, based upon proving a method. So having that hypothesis and going out to prove it but we really prioritize observing to know. And this is really important uh, for relationships and how it is understood. Because if you are able to observe yourself and how you feel, especially with um, BIPOC communities, having trauma related to marine spaces, having the language and the practices that you need to better articulate your needs and your boundaries, um, it's just important to knowing yourself, but also being able to express that to others. And also observation shows up as in exploring our interconnectedness. A lot of your stories, again, we're talking about water, it's just this um, sentient being and a human, you know, human being, you know, and how we're all connected. And so that's something we like to put a part of our heart-based connection within our curriculum design. And then we move on to joy. <laughs> a lot of you mentioned this one for sure. Um, but having fun and while you're having fun, you're also learning. Um, and so that's a lot of times how we make our activities very creative. And not only that, something we like to prioritize is having culturally responsive content, not just to uh, race and ethnicity, but to even generational um, happenings. So like, especially with youth, they do a lot of TikTok or whatever the case, sometimes we create activities that are revolving around some of the things that they are experiencing in their lives on a daily basis, which is very joyful for us to learn how, you know, they're moving through the world, but also joyful for them and fun because it's something that they do on a regular basis. I um, mean, lastly, with joy, it's also incorporating inner child. And so I think we mentioned a little bit about that earlier, but it's really embodying the characteristics of a child um, in your current present self. And as it could be as an adult, but also even as the youth embodying that inner child characteristics where they're super open and accepting um, and that we know a lot of youth in particular connect through play. And so we incorporate a lot of play into our work, which allows for a state of joy to exist. And we move on into authenticity. So authenticity, we're really meaning that we create a space that youth and adults can feel inspired and encouraged to be their full selves and also willing to share that with the group. And so this looks like having culturally responsive material, um, incorporating different perspectives outside of um, white culture and or Western norms so that when, when we're sharing this information and we don't see it as anything other than normal, they can feel open enough to share their own personal experiences. And lastly, it would be commitment. So commitment, Savannah will explain a little bit more. We're gonna talk about all of these and how we incorporate them into some of our current activities. But commitment is really being able to be committed to the community. And that's as showing up as your authentic self um, but also being able to support others within the group. And so this kind of looks like having, when there are our days, have we talked about earlier, we do those check-ins, when there are days where our group as a whole isn't doing so hot, maybe they don't want to be learning, we are committed to them and their well-being. So we are always willing to cut out the activities we have to do today and make the space for them to share whatever it is that's causing them troubles. And so, that is a little bit of the, there's so many things, but we figure that these are broader happenings that incorporate a lot of things that we make sure that each activity that we do incorporates these four components. 
And so Savannah will share a little bit more about what that looks like. Right. Trying to go. Next slide. How do I do it? <laughs> oh, OK. These are some pictures of us um, with our youth that you could look at while I'm talking. But I'm going to break down um, one specific activity that we do and then one kind of type of activity we do. So one of the activities that we like to do, especially when first getting to know a new group, um, kind of as a first day activity, is one that we like to call creature feature. And um, our thought process behind this activity is having a, an activity that allows people to feel into how they want to show up in a space. Um, it allows us to explore interconnectedness and it also unites the group and relieves some of the social pressure that arises when you first enter a new space. So with this activity, what we do is we, go around and we ask the group to imagine themselves on their best day, making their best impression. And we give them a chance to write down three characteristics of how they would describe themselves on their best day, making their best impression. We give them some time to think about that. And then we come back and we ask them to assign one animal to each of those different characteristics that they would use to describe themselves. We give them some more time <laughs> to think about that and jot that down. And then we tell them the inspiration behind our activity before actually starting the activity. And for this activity, it's inspired by animal medicine, which is a divination tool um, that comes from Native Americans um, relationship to animals and the observations that they've gathered over time and messages and guidance that are assigned to these different animals. Um, and basically we read an excerpt from the medicine cards book that explains really what animal medicine is. We explain um, the history behind the divination tool and what tribes knowledge um, the, the book was based, based off of. And then after that, we go into the creative activity. So we explain that we're not going to make an actual medicine card because we don't, we wanna be careful about appropriating um, that culture but also recognizing that we could have a group of individuals from multiple different faiths and backgrounds and they may feel uncomfortable if they were to dive into making a medicine card. So what we do is we make a replacement for the cool cards that we all kind of carry with us. Um, the ones that you know kind of prevent us or limit us from being our full authentic selves. And so we take that imaginary cool card out of our back pocket and we rip it all up together, blow it away together, and then we go into the activity, which asks the group to take a body part or multiple body parts from each of those different animals that they have signed to each of the three different traits and combine them to make one brand new animal that is a representation of them on their best day. And it gets pretty fun, you know, <laughs> pretty silly um, seeing people's drawings, but it's a nice um, tool for kind of getting the group to unite on that first day. And so to think back to, of the components that Ebony mentioned, observation shows up in this activity because it taps into what um, each individual has observed about animals over time, which has made them um, assign those animals to the different characteristics, also allows them to reflect and observe on their own um, character and their own presence and see how they want to step into the space. Authenticity shows up because we are giving the individuals permission to be that best version of themselves um, and let go of some of that um, social pressure that they could be entering the space with initially. It taps into joy because it's just kind of fun and silly and we get to use some of that artistic expression and coloring. Um, and then commitment shows up because it's a commitment to yourself and the group that you're making by saying, hey, this is who I want to be while we're together and in community. Um, another type of activity that we like to do is acting. And so the thought process behind our act, acting activities is that they really help us deepen our understanding through embodiment. Um, so we may do acting activities as a reflection activity. Um, 
as a tool for loosening a, loosening a group up, similar to Creature Feature, or as just another way to kind of absorb a new experience or subject matter. And so for acting, the components of heart-based connection show up in observation through, um, one, we give a prompt, so there's that, but the, the scene, oh, are you all seeing that when it pops up on my screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay. But yeah, so for the observation, um, they are creating these acting scenes themselves. They have the prompt, but they use their own observations of if we're doing a reflection acting, a reflecting activity, they are recalling the observations they made during the actual activity to recreate the scene. Um, they also get the chance to observe each other and share what they observed from each other's performances. Authenticity shows up um, because again, we're loosening up the group and giving them that permission to, to kind of be silly and to let go of that social pressure, uh, joy, it's, it's just fun and silly acting as well. Um, and then finally, commitment. It's not super pronounced in this activity, but um, acting in general can make a group nervous. So, sorry, okay. <laughs> and so by um, deciding to participate, they are making a commitment to the group. And, oh gosh. <laughs> Yeah, they're making a commitment to the group and also um, the group's support and trust is reflected by them participating as well. And by being in a team, um, they kind of receive that support from one another too that helps them push back the nervousness, nervousness and fear. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen also just in case that keeps happening. <laughs> um, and I, can I say something real quick, Savannah? Yeah. Um, and just wanted to say like, a lot of things with these activities, they sound kind of intuitive, but there's really is power in like putting a name on what is happening because then you can curate it and design it accordingly to each and every program. Right. right, which leads me into my next part. Um, something we really like to highlight is that intention is always the goal over happenstance. And, you know, sometimes with these activities by happenstance, they have those qualities of heart-based connection, which is great but it's so important to actually reflect on how you are engaging with people. And that's important because of the delivery from yourself of the activity makes it more impactful, but also maybe if you have somebody who's hesitant or just curious about why you're doing something, you have an actual reasoning behind why you're doing it that has meaning. And so those are some of the ways that the heart-based connection components show up in activities that we do. And now we'll move into something else that we like to incorporate, um, kind of following acting and embodiment. We really like to tie in somatic practices because they are tools for healing. And in my opinion, we are all healing, <laughs> um, especially the, the group of youth that we tend to work with. BIPOC youth have a lot of healing um, individually and generationally generationally when coming into these aquatic spaces. So with somatic practices, you allow yourself to look at how your body is responding to different situations. And you are um, incorporating tools and practices that disrupt or redirect those responses and allow you to create new physical responses and thus new thought patterns that follow because of that. So trauma and stress are known to be stored in the body. And um, it's often described as energy getting stuck in a state of fight, flight, or freeze. And somatic practices allows that energy to move again. Um, we also know from epigenetics that um, your environment can change the expression of your genes and gene alterations have been shown to trace back 12 generations even. So kind of just goes to show how important healing is and how when we are be able to be more aware of our bodies, the healing that comes from that can be passed on as well. Um, body awareness is a tool for unlocking that inner wisdom. And so it's a reasoning for us why it's even more important to learn our true cultural histories and reclaim some of those um, ancestral activities and connections that we do have because who's 
to say what internal wisdom we might unlock by incorporating those things. Um, I also just wanna add that as humans, we are co-regulatory species. So by demonstrating and practicing this body awareness ourselves, we are helping our community at large heal. And today we are gonna have an opportunity to kind of dip our toes in um, embodiment, somatic practice, which Ebony will lead us in. And um, just one, thank you, Savannah, for sharing. Um, two, is it okay, because we're pushing seven minutes, is the go a little bit over? We'll do this practice real quick and just allow, allow space for questions. Okay, great. So I'm good. y'all know what this is, we're interacting. We're gonna stand up. If you're capable, if you're not, just go ahead, sit back in your chair, but we're gonna do this together. Um, there is no shame. There is no embarrassment. Everyone be, will be, you know, doing their own thing. Nobody's worrying about each other. Um, and you know that this is a safe space where you can be you and it is not be strange or weird. So go ahead and plant your feet. I'm gonna move this chair on the ground. Um, stand in a position that feels comfortable to you. Go ahead and do some little neck movement. Move your shoulders a little bit and then just come to a place that feels comfortable. So I'll give y'all a couple of seconds. I'm gonna pull up my timer. Okay. So we're gonna start with just moving our fingertips. Just the tips of your fingers. There is no right movement. Just let them do what they want. And you can just play with that for a couple of seconds. And now we're just gonna incorporate our entire hands, even your wrist. Go ahead and let them move the way you want. Thank you, Jennifer, for coming. Again, try to go ahead and reflect your energy and attention inward. Observe how this is making you feel, um, maybe how your body is moving. And while you're at it, go ahead and incorporate your arms. Again, letting them move the way they want. Go ahead and take some deep breaths. Again, don't think too much about it. Just let your body do it thing. And we're gonna go ahead and incorporate our upper torso. Hands, fingers, upper torso. Again, just internalizing this process. What is happening within your body? And I want to acknowledge that not everyone has access to all of their body parts. And so if you don't, imagine movement there. And if you really want to, move something else in response. And so now we're gonna incorporate our whole body. Go ahead and add in the legs, the feet. You got your hands, your arms. Go ahead and think about the neck. Add the neck in there, your head, you know, a whole body experience. And just let yourself move the way you want for just a couple more seconds.
if you want to challenge, think about your ribs. Your ribs can move separately from your body. Go ahead and give it a try. See if you can get your ribs to move. And we're just going to do this for a couple more seconds. If you've been internalizing this a little bit reserved up until now, well, we got 15, 20 more seconds. Let yourself be free. Let yourself do what it wants. Okay. And you can just bring that on back. Go ahead and settle your body. If it wants to still move, let it do so. But you can do that sitting down. Or if you want to stand for the rest of our presentation, fair game, stand. Go ahead and settle into what feels best. All right. So thank you for participating um, in that with us. Uh, oh, Colin's already got it. We're about to ask you, how was that for you? Um, what did that make you feel like? Was it anything that you noticed after doing that activity? You can come off mute and or drop it in the chat. I think I was probably sitting way too long all day. <laughs> <laughs> Although Travis and I moved uh, meeting rooms earlier, so that felt good. But I didn't really <laughs> walk around or do too much today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you got a chance to move then yeah. right up your alley. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. It felt good. It was wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it felt really good. So it's a lot like yoga too. Do, do you incorporate that into the stuff you do with the kids? Um, not necessarily in that way because yoga is also like a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. um, some people do it recreationally, but it's not something that we necessarily incorporate um, right. in ours into ours. Right. But it's a little bit similar, yes. Mm -hmm. Lots of movement. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of uh, that it doesn't take very long to do a little bit of stretching, and it feels really good afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Jelly said, marvelous. We have a, by the end I noticed I was all smiley and present. <laughs> really beautiful comments. Anemone. Anemone cute. Ah, yes. <laughs> my my seawall is what I call it. <laughs> Speaking of the anemone, there's a cool um, movement meditation. If you just search sea creature movement meditation, that's something that y'all might be interested in checking out. You get to kind of embody different sea creatures. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. Yeah. And so um, thank you for sharing these comments. And they're basically on target what we want to happen when we do practices like this. Um, it's kind of, in our opinion, compared to like a full body scan. But a little, if you're like to move, and I, our kids especially, sometimes they can be very reserved and we want to them to get out of their comfort zone, we do this one instead of just an average um, or the standard full body scan. And it allows them to come into their body to observe themselves. Um, sometimes that happens is you become more present, which is really exciting because we want them to be present after doing this activity and still incorporate some of those practices of uh, being authentic, allowing yourself to be who you are, your body to feel what it needs. Um, and also, wow, I lost my, my train of thought. Ah, ah sorry, hold on. <laughs> so relaxed. <laughs> right. Yeah, is this <laughs> a really good practice um, to get the kids to do, especially in, oh, going back to, yeah, some of the things that happens from the experience is that you feel body parts that might not have been um, feeling too great before you did it. Like maybe you realize like, oh, my rib aches a little bit or oh, my hands are really stiff. Colin realized he needed to stand up and move his body because he hadn't done so all day. And so it's just really nice 
for people to use to do a scan of what they need and communicate that with others. So that's just one of the somatic practices we like to incorporate and also just share because it's very um, easy to do, easy to do on your own. <laughs> I slave my business. <laughs> I tried that and I was like, this is a level up experience, <laughs> isolating a rib. <laughs> um, and there's other people who do this practice more regularly and focus solely on organ experiences as well. And so, which is also a really good practice to see where, how the health of your body is doing. So thank you for indulging in that and please take it to your own uh, workshops and engagements and share that out as well. And so I think, I think that is a wrap. Yeah, um, are we still gonna do Q&A? If, I guess if folks still wanna stay on and do Q&A, we are fine with that. Yeah. Yeah, but I think definitely um, Woody and I can stay. And if people have questions, um, we would love to chat a little bit longer with you. And I think there's a, <laughs> small enough group for us. If you have a question, just take yourself off of mute and ask away. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you to both of you. Um, just really, really nice to get to know you both better and to listen and hear from everybody in the group. You're welcome. Thank you all for being here and for being such active participants also with the cameras on. It doesn't matter if they're off, but it's always nice to see faces and also just people coming off mute and talking to us. That was one of the questions I had. Is it better? I wasn't sure if it's better to have our camera on or off. Is it nice to, to look at faces when you're doing it? <laughs> right. It, it is nice, especially when we're talking about personal stories. But we always tell our kids, like, do whatever feels best. Like, as long as you're participating, um, and that could be like reactions, coming off mute, or seeing like your face, they're all really important and lets us know that they're there. So, I was just thinking about that last movement thing. And I, are you are you doing these programs with kids in, in schools as well, or is it groups outside of school? Um, right now, we're doing after school programming um, under our own organization. We do hope to move into schools eventually, um, but we're only almost a year old, so we're taking yeah. our time. <laughs> well, because I was just thinking that whole thing about moving and getting in touch with yourself is, is really important. And when kids have been sitting all day in school and they're forced to do that without moving, um, yeah. it's really nice that you're incorporating all that into it. And it would be nice to be able to incorporate that into classrooms as well. Eh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, hopefully we, we do like to teach our youth to advocate for themselves and their self needs. So hopefully they can bring that back to their teachers and, <laughs> and incorporate yeah. that in school. I just noticed in the chat that Sheila said goodbye and thank you. She said she enjoyed this unique um, <laughs> time, but now she was hungry. So she had to leave. <laughs> And then nice. I also see um, Nicole has their hand up. If, Nicole, you, can you go off of mute or do you want to put something in the chat? I'm going to try. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to apologize now. I have really crappy internet. So we'll see. We'll hope this goes well. Um, Ebony and Spana, that was awesome. Thank you so much for presenting. There's just so much I love about your approach to um, working with youth and these heart-based connections really speak to me. I'm curious, part of my question was answered. It sounds like you're doing after-school programming right now. Um, I am curious if you have an age group that you focus on or if you guys are open to just K-12, whatever audience you have. And then my other question, which maybe isn't quite relevant yet because you've yet to move into the formal classroom space, but I'm curious how much time you spend with students um, in one setting, I guess, uh, thinking about like bringing high school students into a situation like this and just the, knowing the challenges they have with 45 minute class periods or 50 minute class periods and what that might look like. Yeah, um, our target age group is high school age youth. Um, we also do work with middle school age youth on occasion though we have a current middle school program right now um 
trying to make sure I remember all the components of the question, but our, our program days are usually around three to four hours. Um, a lot of times we are in, yeah, this is when it's in person though, <laughs> when we're in person and we get to incorporate different activities. Um, but we usually find that the time goes by quick and the youth are having a great time. Um, virtually, we don't really like to go over two hours, um, especially because just being in a virtual environment for youth feels like school automatically, which, you know, as we're talking about somatics a little bit, when you have those certain thoughts, it triggers responses in your body, which just reaffirm the thoughts. And so it's kind of harder to break out of that um, when virtual. Yeah, and when we are in person, they um, tend to be six weeks programs. We'll meet once a week, three or four hours, six weeks, um, and spend, you know, the first portion trying to just build a relationship, especially depending on our age group, you know, again, some of them are more responsive than others, but we want to make sure that they have the time they need to get comfortable with us. Um, but yeah, we haven't done it in schools, we'll be intrigued. And if we were, we would probably do, yeah, very entry level practice and hope that they would connect with us outside of that to get involved with some of our programs. I hope that answers all the questions. Right. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. I love that you focus on relationship building too. I think it's a great model for what how we should move forward. So thanks. Thank you. Can, I guess the last question, can we get in touch with you after this <laughs> to talk to you? Yes, definitely. <laughs> we, we were going to drop our contact info in the chat, but we'll just do that right now. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing I was wondering, you mentioned, you know, you did some great activities with us tonight, but you also asked, like, kind of uh, reference some other activities that you do in your programs. Um, do you have a cheat sheet of, like, uh, references of where to go for some fun activities? Or we, we've had other speakers where we put, like, um, a reference or a follow-up guide on the web page along with their um, talk. And so if you had mm -hmm. something, I'm sure people would love to have it as a reference. But, yeah. It's a good idea. We haven't developed anything yet, like a big <laughs> shareable uh, list. Okay. And we kind of make up activities as we go and co create co-design for different organizations we're working with. Um, but there is an organization called partners in youth empowerment and they lead a lot of different workshops on creative facilitation and how to engage um, groups of youth specifically and really great organization mm -hmm. great thank you yeah over time we we hope to hope to we we jumped in and got really busy and we're like two people and so <laughs> we're trying to imagine all these dynamics but yeah. soon and we'll pass it along <laughs> all right great <laughs> Thank you. Is there any last questions? I have a question. Um, it's Yogi. Um, oh, there's a literature on uh, emotional learning, which uh, I think we all sort of recognize if we've been in this for a while that you know, learning isn't really through the brain. It's more through the heart or some connection between it, which is what you're touching on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great, you know, that you're sort of getting the movement component into that. Um, generally, when we go on a field trip, you know, you have to get the movement out to the novelty of the situation and so on before the learning actually starts happening. But uh, in some ways, I think you're, you're blending this. And you now there was a situation, we were working in, in Brazil at a school and you know, their schooling was very rigid. And <clears throat> so we had this lady come in to do community mapping with them one of the first things she did was get them to stand up on their desks and you know, look at uh, you know, what's around them. And then of course it lent into working like you're doing, working on you know, their personal knowledge of what they see on their way to school and that kind of stuff. But I think certainly breaking sort of the routine in a really dramatic fashion was a key element there. And um, I think you're in some ways doing the same, you know, and you can probably go more overboard in a sense, you know, judging your group and see what kind of movement or what kind of activity really breaks, you know, makes them say, well, I am present, you know, I'm not just here, you know, watching, watching you guys. And um, 
I think Woody, you know, he works in the, in the outdoor education and I think he probably sees this a lot is, you know, you get people actually doing things. And then the trick is, you know, how do you slide in education or those other things that you want to want to make a change in? And I think you guys are really touching well on that. And um, there's, you know, some of these experiences that you know, would probably blend in quite well with what what you're doing in terms of, you know, evolving your your ideas. Congratulations! It's, it sounds like really nice stuff you're doing. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and well, that's practice. That was kind of cool. I would love to uh, if you could drop in the chat the name of the person. Who did that activity? Love to look them up a little bit too. Dancing on the table. Oh yeah, she's not around yeah. anymore. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I see that you've put your contact information into the chat. So if people want to grab that real quick. Um and thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank Everybody, you very much. And especially you at Ebony and Savannah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all yes, for having us. us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Enjoy the rest of your night. We would like to just share a quote as we end <laughs> with you all. Um, something for you to walk away with. And that quote goes, I am like the water that runs over me, immune to permanence, recycling endlessly. I am water. I am life. The form may change, but the substance stays the same. Strike me down and I will rise again. Vinket qui patitur, which translates to those who endure conquer. It's by Ricky Yancey. Dropped it in the chat. So thank you all again so much for being here. Thank you. Have thank a wonderful you. night, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.